Welcome to Technical Training Professionals Demo CD for Combined Cycle Power Plant e-learning courses and water treatment e-learning courses. Please use the contact information shown to contact TTP. This demo CD provides portions of interactive training programs for combined cycle power plants. These materials can be purchased in generic format or altered to utilize specific plant equipment models. Detailed 3D models have been created for use within this course. Click on any of the links listed below to preview animations that have been created from these 3D models. Click on any of the subjects shown to view a sample interactive. Once you have exited from the selected demo program, you will be returned to this frame. Welcome to Book 1, Chapter 1. This chapter will overview the combustion turbine flow path. The incoming air to the turbine flows through a series of filters on its way to support combustion. Ambient air first enters the filter housing through a weather hood and screen that protects the filters from the effects of rain, sun, and debris. The air then goes through an evaporative cooling section that maximizes the gas turbine's output on hot or dry days. Downstream of the evaporative cooling are mist eliminators that capture moisture. Downstream of the mist eliminators, the air passes through the inlet silencer that is used to lessen the noise coming from the inlet air and the compressor inlet. The inlet manifold directs an efficient flow of air into the axial flow compressor inlet. The inlet casing provides a smooth transition flow of air into the axial compressor. Click on the video button to view an animation of the inlet air system. The inlet casing also provides access to the thrust bearing and the inlet journal bearing. Variable inlet guide vanes are located in the inlet casing directly in front of the first row of compressor blades. The vanes are used to regulate the amount of air entering the compressor. Stationary blades or blade rings are positioned before each of the sets of rotating blades. The positioning of these stationary blades efficiently directs the air to the oncoming rotating blades. The rotor is made up of a bladed compressor spindle and a bladed turbine spindle that is bolted together to make a single shaft. To view an animation of the compressor, click on the button provided. The compressor consists of 16 rows of individually removable rotating blades. Dovetail blade roots attach the blades to the rotor shaft. The compressor diaphragm has stationary airfoil shaped vanes mounted in semicircular rings set into the compressor housing. Through the use of variable inlet guide vanes and compressor stage bleed vanes, the compressor bleed air system controls the amount of air flowing in the compressor section to prevent pressure surging or blade stalling. You have now completed Book 1, Chapter 1, Overview of the Combustion Turbine Flow Paths. For this demo, click Continue to move to Book 4, Chapter 1, Overview of Combustion Turbine Controls. Welcome to Book 1, Chapter 1, Overview of HERSIG Function. This chapter will briefly describe the purpose of the HERSIG and its fundamental design. The function of the Heat Recovery Steam Generator System, or HERSIG, is to transfer heat from the combustion turbine exhaust gases to the water and steam contained inside HERSIG tubes. Exhaust gases which pass over HERSIG tubes provide the heat that is used to either produce steam or to superheat steam. This heat transfer process produces the main steam, intermediate pressure steam, reheat steam, and low pressure steam at the pressures and temperatures required by the steam turbine. One HERSIG is provided for each of the two gas turbines, and two HERSIGs provide steam for the single steam turbine. This is called a two-on-one combined cycle plant configuration. Both of the HERSIGs operate at three pressure and temperature levels with natural circulation. The three pressures are called high, intermediate, and low pressure. These terms correspond to the classification of steam pressures they produce. The HERSIG uses three steam drums of similar design to heat water, convert water into steam, and then superheats that steam in additional tubing designed for that purpose. Each HERSIG includes a selective catalytic reduction, or SCR system. The SCR system, which is located in HERSIG boxes 3 and 4, 
is designed to reduce nitrogen oxide emissions from the HERSIG stack. To review an animated video of the HERSIG's design, click on the video button. You have now completed Book 1, Chapter 1, Overview of HERSIG Function. Click Continue to move to Book 1, Chapter 2, Overview of HERSIG General Design Features. Click Exit to exit the course. Welcome to Book 1, Chapter 2, Overview of HERSIG General Design Features. Three steam drums which operate at high pressure, intermediate pressure, and low pressure receive a steam and water mixture coming from their respective evaporator tube sections. As this steam water mixture enters one of the three drums, it first passes through the primary steam separator, where water and steam are separated. Before leaving a drum, the steam passes through the secondary separator and leaves the drum through a saturated steam line. The LP, IP, and HP drums are designed to contain the expansion or swell of their individual evaporators which occurs during startup due to the expansion of water that is being heated. The HERSIG is primarily composed of finned tubes. The outer side of the HERSIG tubes are covered with fins. These fins are designed to enlarge the tube's surface area to increase the rate of heat transfer. Boiler racks are rows of finned tubes that are welded to distribution and collection manifolds. Boiler modules are composed of racks which are arranged together. The inflow to outflow on a pipe rack can be from the top header to the bottom header or from the bottom header to the top header. The headers of adjacent boiler racks are placed against each other in order to avoid bypass flow of exhaust gases outside the modules.